Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about megapixels. How many megapixels do you really need? Now this is just an A4 size print and you can see it looks quite clear. Now at the back here, it's an A2 size print. I know it's a little bit far and you are not able to see it. I'll bring it closer later, I promise. Now to preface today's video, I'm not going into nitty gritty details but just going to talk about how the aesthetic looks and how much minimum megapixels do you really need to get a print on an A4 size and on an A2 size poster. There are a million variables out there such as camera models, printer models, the colors that you use, even the screen that you use to print the print itself. So I'm not going to talk about that but just going to talk about in terms of the print size and how viewable it is and acceptable if you are using it for a print job. So in search of today's answers to the topic, I'll be using my full frame A7 II which is about 24.3 megapixels and my Samsung S10 here which is about 12 megapixels. I'll be taking a series of photos to show you guys the comparison between a mobile phone print and a full frame camera print whether is it worth bringing out a big camera comparing with just your mobile phones. So I'll bring out some comparisons here but just to preface the comparison photos, I did not digitally enhance any of these features but just maybe added a bit of brightness but what you see is really what you get if you were to print it out from your mobile phone or from your DSLR. So before we go down into the details of the prints, let me bring you guys to the back scene of how I took these photos and where I took these photos. Hi guys, so we are outside here now. I'm going to be shooting using my mobile phone and this uh, A7 II full frame cameras. So I will try to stick uh, as close as possible to the same settings so that you're able to test the difference. I'm sorry if the sound is a little bit noisy because we are next to the waterfall. So let's shoot some waterfall and let's get on to back to the studio to be able to show you guys the difference after I've shot them. Just from these photos itself, you can see there's a clear difference, but what about when they are printed? Alright, so let's look at these two photos which is printed on the A4 size print up close and see what are the differences. Alright, so let's get started. The one on my right is actually the one taken from my Samsung mobile phone, while the one on the left is actually taken from my full frame A7 II camera. Now if you are looking at it from a far distance, eh, the photos doesn't have that much of a difference. But let's take a closer look. Okay, when you take a closer look, there are certainly some differences over here. Uh, if you can see that the lanterns are quite vibrant and uh, you can definitely see the colour contrast over here. Whereas the one that is on my mobile phone is a little bit faded and the colours aren't that strong. Now if you take a closer look over here, you can see the silhouette and the shadows of the palm leaves. While on the mobile, you can't see much of it over here. So this is definitely a down point if you're talking about details. But all in all, for A4 size paper, it actually looks quite fine in my opinion and it doesn't make that much of a difference if you were to just blow it up into a small little size like this. Alright, now we see a difference between these two. Let's add something to make this whole thing more interesting. Let's take out the A7 II full frame photo and replace it with my RX100 camera. It's basically this camera which I shoot quite a lot of my YouTube videos in. It's a small little point and shoot with 20 megapixels. But let's compare the photos. Okay, once we put it side by side, you can't see that much of a difference but if we move it closer you can see that even though the RX100 cameras isn't have such a big sensor you're still able to see the color contrast difference in the lanterns as well as in the shadowy areas now but if you're talking about details if you look at the shadowy areas there isn't a world of a difference but if you pick closer you can definitely notice some a little bit more details in the RX100 camera but once again, when we pull it back up, both OG looks quite fine and there isn't a very uh, gigantic difference between these two photos. Alright, so as you can see, I've added this camera to the mix to make things more interesting. I apologize for the coarse voice here because I guess I've not been eating very healthily for the past few days. Now with that said, let's take these A4 photos out of the frame and let's bring in the A2 photos which is right behind here. Alright, as I mentioned from my voiceovers, there are a lot of variable factors like how far you see a photo or how near you see it and what kind of lightings that you have. My lighting might not be the best so there might be some highlights on the photos itself. But if you see from far, it actually looks quite okay, right? Let's take a closer look. Overall, the, uh, the contrast in the details is definitely quite visible over here comparing with over here. 
you can hardly tell that there's a lantern here or just and just assume that it's just some lighting but over here you can see that there's a clear shape and color of the lanterns well just in case you guys are curious uh, in Singapore we're having this mid-autumn festival so we actually have a lot of lantern decors all over the place now as I mentioned in the details you can look over here you can see all the silhouettes and the shadows are very distinct whereas the one that's on my mobile over here is very milky and you can't see much of it so let's move to the top left over here you can see over here that there's a lot of the details maintained in the leaves whereas over here a lot of the details are lost at the bottom you can see that there's a walkway over here and you can see the more details in the tiles whereas here is definitely a lot more pixelated the overall sharpness is also definitely visible in terms of not just the details but the outline of each of the objects that is inside here there's one area which I think the mobile phone performs slightly better if you can see the color if you can see the water fountain over here it's a little bit more blurred comparing with the one that is over here it's definitely more sharper sharper and clearer in the details that's because probably if you have seen my other video um, the mobile phone does a little bit of artificial sharpening all right let's do a unique challenge and just bring on the full frame photo into the mix now once you compare the full frame camera against the RX100 cameras you can also definitely see a huge difference now if you take a closer look over the leaves over here a lot of details is lost on my RX100 camera as this is an older RX100 camera it's also the colors are also a little bit bluish comparing with the one that's taken on my A72 full frame cameras as I mentioned I did not take with any of the color balance so what you see is really what you get if you were to take a photo from either of the cameras now let's switch it over to other details if you can see over here you can definitely see the different levels in the leaf comparing with over here is faded is faded and it's more pixelated there's also some light that's lost within here you can see it's much darker here comparing with over here if you look closer the colors the reflection over here is quite flat while while here you can definitely see that there's a light that's coming through the water over here so details are definitely kept in all these small little areas as for the shape of the lanterns, I guess to me it doesn't have a very huge difference. It's just slightly more blurred or pixelated over here comparing with over here at the full frame camera. But overall you can see these two photos aren't a, so much of a difference comparing with taken with a mobile phone. So the mobile phone definitely lose out in this whole aspect. Uh, if, if you were to have a point and shoot, it's still definitely better than just using your mobile phone. So all in all we have compared two sides today. One is the A2 and one is the A4 size does megapixel really make a difference? it's yes and it's a no now let me explain now the photos that we have taken today is not only due to the camera itself but due to the size of the sensor that is within the camera now as I mentioned a lot on my channel the full frame camera it means that it has a full frame sensor that is within the camera itself now for a mobile phone it's definitely much smaller if you want to know what are the sizes difference I actually have a chart right here which you can have a look you can see, clearly see that it's a multiple times difference in terms of sensor size so the information captured from here and from mobile phone will definitely make a very huge difference when it comes to the prints so it's not really just about the megapixels but about the information they're able to capture within the sensor itself so how does it actually affect the prints now i want you to imagine the megapixels is the paint that you use for artists whereas the sensor itself is the canvas size that you have there's no point of having a huge canvas if you do not have very nice paints right the canvas itself represents the bigger sensor size that you have the bigger the size of the sensor the larger your canvas whereas the megapixel represents the paint the more megapixels you have the more different kinds of paints and colors that you have it takes both of these combined together to be able to have a very nice print out so it's not just about megapixels, it's about the sensor size. But just for the sake of knowing how big your print is in terms of the megapixels that you have, I have a chart right here for you to have a clear reference to be able to see how far you can print without losing that much of image quality. So just like I mentioned at the start, there are different variables towards print, where you're standing, the kind of printer and such. But having a good megapixel count, as well as a big sensor within your cameras matters if you are going to print something out. So I hope you guys like this video where I compare using a DSLR printout, a point and shoot printout, and even my mobile phone printout. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video or learned something and do subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet and click on the bell notification over here so that you'll be updated of my latest upload.
If you guys cannot wait for my next upload, I have a playlist over here which cover photography topics which I think you guys would like to know if you are new to photography. If not, I'll see you guys in the next video.